It's the beginning of October, harvest season. We've made this journey to investigate a scandal that many ignore. Forced labor in the cotton fields, a system orchestrated within the highest ranks of the state by the country's authorities themselves. Officially, we're here as tourists. In the car with us is Elena Orleva, a human rights activist. She's 60 years old and has fought for years to end forced labor in the fields. According to Elena and international NGOs, one million people are forced to work in the fields each year. Elena is leading us to a farm she visited a few days ago a field where doctors and nurses have been requisitioned. During the harvest, they stay in this school. The gym and some classrooms serve as dormitories. These doctors are enlisted by the authorities during the harvest. Вот компьютер, они каждый день дают э, сводку, сводку. Вот их документы Ангрен Шахар Тибиот. There's no time to see the gym, which serves as a dormitory. Elena wants to move quickly so as not to attract too much attention. The field is just behind the school. Здесь собирают хлопок врачи из Ангрена. Anne Gren is 100 kilometers from here, but in order to get everyone into the fields, the Uzbek state has planned everything meticulously. These videos were filmed in secret during previous harvests. <laughs> A bit like in the army, civil servants and students are transported by bus under police escort. The mass movement of the population is filmed by Uzbeks who wish to remain anonymous. Elena Orleva is the only activist not to hide away. Pamphlets in hand, she reminds the civil servants of their rights. Вы тоже медик? Медик? Вы такой получали листочек? Возьмите, пожалуйста. Меня зовут Елена Урлаева. Я уже к вам приезжала, но только вам не достался такой листочек. Писано, что медики не должны собирать хлопок. But our intrusion is causing upset. Behind the nurse, these three men have spotted us. And when we begin our interview, look at what is going on in the background. One of the three men runs away. At the time, we see nothing and we carry on with the interview. Is she okay for working in the field? <laughs> Complaints are out of the question. There's always somebody supervising. When the workers don't fill their quota, this is what can happen. In this video that was filmed in secret by an Uzbek in another plantation, we hear the chief supervisor, the woman in the white blouse, dictating a text to a nurse. Mm -hmm. 
Uz kuliz bilen yazgarınızı, arizinizi yazıp çıkartırsınız. Ne dediniz? For civil servants who've been requisitioned, there's only one way to avoid the harvest, finding a replacement like this young man. How old are you? He's paid? He's not paid? No? No money? At this point, one of the men who spotted us earlier approaches we leave the vicinity quickly. And it's on the road a few minutes later that trouble really begins. Вот нам уже, по-моему, преграждают дорогу. Это нам? Judging by the number of police officers surrounding the car to check the driver's papers, we can tell it's serious. Actually, it's us that the police officers are interested in, and our translator returns with some bad news. In a dictatorship like Uzbekistan, investigative journalists who pose as tourists, like us, can run into a lot of trouble. What, what, what? What's happening? From the hostility of the police officers in front of the station, we can see that there's trouble ahead. For the time being, no one notices that we are filming with our fans. We, the fake tourists, stay together but in custody. For several hours, the police officers look through our documents asking us questions and verifying our identities. Denizo, Denizo, Matthias, Matthias, Matthias. Admittedly, in this police station, hidden in the darkest depths of a dictatorship, we weren't mistreated. But very quickly we realized that for Elena and for our translator, the situation was a lot more serious. But what what's happening with them? Ah, they are writing something explaining what was the proposed, what's the um, idea for visiting Katman Fields. Here says that Elena, she always felt problematic with the government. After five hours of interrogation, the police finally escort us back to the hotel without having found out that we are journalists. Elena and Timur remain in custody. They are released three hours later. Seven days after our arrest, we decide to see Elena again, late in the evening, during a storm, and taking many precautions to ensure we're not being followed. We have a meeting at her home in the suburb of Tashkent. Don't be fooled by her smile. Elena's interrogation was a lot less laid back than our own. She shows us the medical certificates she printed following her arrest. And then she told us what she had suffered during the eight hours of interrogation. Uh, 
по ногам кричали, мы убьем тебя. То есть э, раздевали до гола, обыскивали э, всячески. Вот это все это в такой грубой форме происходило. Вам страшно? Мне? Да. Ну, не то, что страшно. Нет, мне не страшно, мы уже привыкли. Просто, знаете, обидно что, что на протяжении 10 лет сколько нас бьют. Violence, bullying and even forced stints in a psychiatric hospital. For the moment, Elena tolerates it all. In Uzbekistan, it is costly to mess with the cotton industry, an industry that makes certain high-ranking leaders of the state rich. This is confirmed by Dmitry Tikhonov. He left Uzbekistan in December 2015, but is still afraid. Мне не хотелось бы преследований со стороны э, спецслужб Узбекистана, скажем, ну там, насколько я знаю, политических мигрантов преследуют и даже депортируют обратно в Узбекистан. Dimitri is a human rights activist. Before leaving his country, he regularly went to meet workers during the harvest. It was whilst making a film like this in September 2015 that he was denounced and then removed from his position. В этот самый момент в кабинет ворвался начальник, офицер. Он взял со стола стопку бумаг, там документы лежали. Вот стал бить меня по лицу, по голове, и как я уже сказал, с криками хлопок наше богатство, наше достояние, ты мешаешь, лучше бы ехал собирать, чем фотографируешь. Это я в первый день сделал Так вот приехал, крыши нет, потолок обрушился. Это мой рабочий кабинет. Здесь были ноутбуки, документы и по журналистике, и по правам человека. Сгорел ноутбук, два компьютера. Все архивы уничтожили. Dimitri considers the cotton industry a scandal of the state. До миллиарда долларов дает хлопок в среднем в бюджет Узбекистана. Но в прошлом году, по-моему, 800 миллионов. А это общеизвестно, что в Узбекистане коррупция имеет громадные, так сказать, размеры. Мы в числе лидирующих стран мира. Поэтому значительная часть от поступлений, денежных поступлений от хлопка просто-напросто оседает в карманах у тех, кто активно, так сказать, противодействует тому, чтобы принудительный труд в Узбекистане исчез. Вот и все. И когда мы боремся с принудительным трудом в Узбекистане, мы по сути залазим к ним в карман. Despite the human rights violations and the suspicion of corruption, members of the European Parliament recently voted by large majority to standardize the textile trade with Uzbekistan, which means laundering the Uzbek cotton industry. Uzbekistan a fait un travail remarquable. Ce n'est pas terminé et il y a encore énormément de choses à faire en Uzbekistan. Mais si nous voulons gagner la confiance, il faut aussi que nous fassions un geste et c'est le geste que nous poserons aujourd'hui. Die Situation in Uzbekistan wahrlich noch nicht so ist, wie wir uns das für die Menschen im Land wünschen. Aber wir haben zu Recht in der Entschließung aus dem Jahr 2011 verlangt, dass es in Uzbekistan keine komplett heile Welt geben muss. From a trade point of view, is also very much in the interest of the European Union because it provides legal certainty for our exporters in that sector. In less diplomatic language, trade with the Uzbeks generates 2 billion euros each year. At this price, surely it's better to have a good relationship with Uzbekistan. Tough luck, Elena Uleva and Dmitry Tikhonov.